If you've been looking for a super easy, economical, and delicious chowder, then this recipe is for you. Welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today's recipe is very simple. I feel like I say that every video, but I really work hard to make these recipes easy for you to follow and absolutely delicious. And this one hits it on all marks, let me tell you. Plus, it's economical, okay? All right, we're gonna get right into it. There's very little prep involved, which I love about a recipe. So first, you wanna take a yellow onion, or you could use a sweet onion, but surprisingly enough, I used a yellow onion because the cost of a sweet onion was too much this time of year. So you wanna take one yellow onion and dice it into about a quarter inch dice. Then take three to four stalks of celery and slice them up into about a half inch slice. And then the star of the show is smoked sausage. Now this is fully cooked smoked sausage that you get at the grocery store. You need 13 ounces of it. And you know, a lot of recipes for sausage and corn chowder call for the ground type of sausage, bulk sausage. And I thought, now nah, I want a little different texture and a little different flavor in my chowder and this turned out amazing. So you want 13 ounces and you're gonna cut it into either little coins that are about a quarter to a half of inch in size and width, or you can cut it on the bias. And that really depends on how big you want them in your chowder and how you want them to look. I think cutting on the bias gives the chowder a little bit of a fancier look, but it is totally up to you. And I did it both ways and I'm gonna put both into my chowder today. And the last bit of prep is to take four cloves of garlic. And you're gonna wanna cut off the root end because it's hard. And if you get rid of that, it's easier to smash and peel. Then you're gonna take the back of your knife and just smash down on it. And then the paper comes off super easy. And we use smashed garlic in this recipe. We don't mince it. This gives a really nice, garlicky flavor without being too pungent, okay? Trust me, it's delicious. All right, let's get to cooking. We're using a pressure cooker for this, okay? And let me explain why. Because it worked better, okay? So I'm a firm believer in using an appliance that works the best for the recipe. With this one, I thought, okay, well, let me try it in the pressure cooker. Let me try it on the stovetop. And on the stovetop, it does work. And if you don't have a pressure cooker, I will give those instructions in the written post. However, I had to use more flour and it took longer and it was more hands-on. For all of those reasons, I'm using the pressure cooker, okay? So if you have a pressure cooker, use it, it works great. I'm using the Ninja Foodie, but any type of electric pressure cooker will work fine for this recipe. We're gonna open the lid. We want to turn on sear saute, which it defaults to here. We wanna go on high and hit start. Now, I'm using butter in this recipe instead of oil. You could use oil instead, but it's a chowder. It's got some cream in it. It's nice and rich, and I think the butter just adds to that. So, three tablespoons of butter going in. Now, when you're sauteing with butter, you do have to be careful about your temperatures because it could burn. This is a great time if you have some clarified butter or even some ghee. You could use that instead if you wanted to. Once that melts, I'm gonna put in the chopped onion, which turns out to be about a cup and a half, which was one medium yellow onion. And then I used four stalks of celery, which turned out to be about a cup. If your measurements vary a little bit, don't worry about it. Just try to get at least a cup of onion and three quarters cup of celery and your ratios will be fine. I have a little more and that's gonna be fine too, so don't sweat that. Once your butter is melted, you're gonna add in your onions and your celery. Give that a stir around a little bit. Now we're gonna season with some salt and pepper. One teaspoon of fine grind sea salt is what I'm using. Actually, this is um, diamond crystal kosher salt. I always use uh, fine grind sea salt, but I've kind of been switching over to the diamond crystal kosher salt and I'm really liking it. Um, if you haven't tried that, give it a try. One teaspoon is what I found I needed for this recipe. However, if you want to start off with a half of a teaspoon, be my guest. You can always season at the end, but I found that one teaspoon works well. Next thing is the pepper. Now this is where it's going to be a little bit subjective. I like to use one full teaspoon in this recipe. I like the little spice of the pepper. But if you're making it for the first time and you're not a huge spice lover, cut that down to a half of a teaspoon. All right, stir that all together. We're gonna let this cook for just a few minutes. 
and I'm gonna add in the sausage. In the meantime, while that's sauteing, let's make our roux. Now, I'm sort of famous for my cheater roux, okay? So, uh, especially when pressure cooking because we can't add in the flour, the thickening agents before we go under pressure and it becomes a little bit cumbersome if you have to make the roux separately or have to remove it from the pot. So, this is the workaround for making a roux, a blonde roux for pressure cooking, okay? Take and for this recipe, we need three tablespoons of flour, three tablespoons of butter. That will vary based on what the recipe is. But for this one, that's the ratio that we need to thicken the chowder at the end. So three tablespoons of melted butter into your flour. And then just stir it up. And it's gonna become like a loose liquid. Try to get the clumps out, but it's not even that important, but it, it mixes pretty well. And as it mixes, it will thicken a little bit into kind of a loose paste, okay? All right, that's exactly what we want. Now, depending on what pressure cooker you're using and what type of a trivet or a rack you have will depend on what you put this in. If I'm using the two lid Ninja Foodi, meaning it has a separate pressure lid, I will use the Fat Daddy-O either four inch or six inch round pan, put my roux in and cover it. However, with the one lid model and the six and a half quart, the way the rack sits, this is just a tad bit too tall, so it won't work in that model. I also have another tray. This is like a hot dog bun tray, so I could use this. But guess what? You probably don't have one of these. So we are gonna go with what everybody has, although you might not like to use it aluminum okay so if you don't have any kind of a container that is pressure safe that will sit on top of the rack or trivet in the high position then use the foil or make your roux on the stove okay because you can do that as well so what i do is make a little packet nothing fancy okay just like that and I put the paste right in the center. Okay. And then just close it up. And make sure it's nicely sealed. And I just push it down like that so it's nice and flat and it's gonna sit right on the top rack. So what happens is this will cook as we're under pressure. And cooking the flour is super important when making a roux. Otherwise, your chowder is going to taste like flour and it is not appetizing at all, okay? All right. Got a little bit of browning on these onions. They look amazing. Now we're going to add in our sausage. And our four smashed garlic cloves. And you can throw in your bay leaf right now. And we're gonna give this a stir around and just let the sausage sit on the bottom of the pot. Let me pull this out real quick. I wanna show you something. So when I was cutting this up, I didn't separate this all the way, okay? Make sure they're separated all the way and they don't break up when you're pressure cooking. All right, we're gonna let that sit on the bottom here and we're gonna cut up our potatoes. Now I don't do this until just before adding them because they will turn brown and you do not want to soak them in water. We want the starch to come out in the pot. That also helps thicken everything up. All right, so what I do is I cut the potato in half, then I turn it on its side like this and I cut again in half. Then I just take my knife and go down into three or four, uh, three or four slices and then I just slice them up. You want it to be in bite-sized pieces. They will break up some under pressure cook. So I find that this is a good size, which is probably about one and a half inches, but it's totally up to you. If you cut them too small, they will start to disintegrate. Like this one will probably just disintegrate. That's fine though. That thickens the chowder as well. Now, if you're gonna skip the potatoes, cause let's say you wanted to make a low carb version of this because you absolutely could. You're gonna skip the potatoes. You may want to add a little bit more of a thickener. So you wouldn't wanna do a roux, but you could add some xanthan gum or some other type of thickener at the end to get the chowder nice and thick. 
And if you're on a keto diet, you probably already know how to do that, but I will have those instructions in my written post as well. Add the potatoes directly to the pot. Give them a stir around. Take a look at the bottom here. See if you're seeing any burning. I am not, it's looking really good. So I'm gonna keep going before I deglaze that pot with some chicken stuff. Now we don't want the potatoes to cook too much at this stage. So if you're pretty slow with chopping, then you may not wanna add them in until when you have them all chopped and add them in all at once and then go to the next step. All right, I've got some browning on some of the sausage. That is beautiful. Now it's time to deglaze with two cups of chicken stock or chicken broth. This is actually chicken broth that's right from the container that you get at the store. Um, if you make your own chicken broth, if you undersalt it, then you may need to add salt. If you have it, I don't want to say overly salted, but like perfectly salted for like chicken noodle soup, then you might want to go down on your salt a little bit. Okay. So those are some adjustments you can make at the end. So start off a little bit low on the salt. If you're unsure how salty your chicken broth is. All right. Two cups or just about two cups of drained corn. You can use canned or you can use frozen. If you use canned, make sure it's drained. Mix that in. It's a 15 ounce can, which is just under two cups. It's about one and three quarters. If I'm using frozen, I usually use about two cups. It makes no difference in this recipe as far as timing goes, okay? All right, last ingredient we're gonna add in right now, one tablespoon of Cholula or your favorite hot sauce. Now, this does add some spice, but it also adds a lot of flavor. So if you don't want spicy, don't add it in but again, adjust your seasonings at the end because it may be a little bit bland. I made my stovetop version without it and also with a half of a teaspoon of pepper instead of a full teaspoon. And I thought it was really lacking in flavor. Like I had to add a little bit more salt and I think I would have added some onion powder or some garlic powder too. But instead I just added the Cholula to it because I love this flavor. It is the perfect balance of heat and flavor. Let me tell you, if you haven't tried Cholula, try it. And this is not a paid advertisement. I just love it. Okay. Mix that all in. Now we're ready to go under pressure. You want to do this fairly quickly because as soon as your, um, your broth is hot and your potatoes are sitting in there, if you like walked away for 30 minutes and said, I'll pressure cook later, you may have too much starch come out of your potatoes and thicken that liquid too much and not go under pressure. You'll either get the no pressure or the water or the burn notice. Okay, last thing we need to do is get our rack in or trivet, whatever you're using, nestle it down, put our packet or container with the roux on, Close the pressure lid. Make sure the valve is to the seal position, which on the Ninja Foodie that is sitting right in the middle here, kind of floating around. If you push it too far to the right or to the left, that's vented. It's a little misleading because it says seal this way, but don't go too far, okay? All right, on this model, we're gonna slide the slider. I've gotta turn it off and turn it back on. We wanna take our pressure cook time to two minutes. Now remember, the pot is hot, but everything is cooked except for those potatoes right? So it's going to take somewhere between seven and 10 minutes to come to pressure. We'll pressure cook for two minutes and then we will do an immediate release. When all the pressure is released and it says it's safe to open, you can go ahead and open the pressure cooker and you can see it takes a good amount of time. There's a lot of steam built in there then carefully open up the lid. And now we want to get out that roux packet. Now this won't stay hot for long, but what's inside the flour and the butter, that's going to be hot. So you're going to want to have something to scrape it out with. So carefully open this up. This is what it's going to look like. 
okay? And then just scrape it into the pot. And it's fine if there's a little left, okay? There usually is. And now we wanna give it a nice stir. That's gonna thicken everything up. And we pour in our cream. Now, you don't have to use the full cup, but you can see how thick this is. Once you add in the cup of cream, it becomes the perfect consistency for a nice chowder. Whoops, I'm gonna get that out right now while I see it. Then just stir it up. You can leave it on the keep warm. You don't have to heat it up. The flour will thicken. All right, that looks perfect. Now, as always, you're gonna wanna taste for those seasonings. So just grab a little bit out. It's good, but for me, it needs just a little bit of salt to balance the heat and bring out all the other flavors. And again, you know, that will depend on what type of broth you use and what your salt tolerance is, okay? So that's why I like to start out with one teaspoon and then increase as needed. All right, now we'll let that sit there for a minute. I have a few of the leaves from the celery. Instead of throwing those away, what I like to do is just chop them up and add them right in to the chowder right now. This just adds a beautiful color to your chowder. All right, there we go. Perfect consistency. I know it's gonna taste good. Let's dish it up. Look at that. Amazing. A little few of those on for extra garnish. It looks beautiful. All right, let's see. So this is a coin that I just cut into a round. Let's see if I got one, and this one's on the bias. This one got a little more browning. I just kind of like the way that they look when they're on the bias. You could also chop them up thinner. If you didn't want these big pieces in your chowder, chop them up a little bit more. All right, let's make sure everything is cooked perfectly, which really means those potatoes, because everything else is already cooked. Mmm. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. You know it's a potato, but it is not firm at all. If you want your potatoes a little firmer, go down to one minute of pressure cook time. All right. Mmm, mmm, mmm. This is simply amazing. It is so easy to make. It is economical, it makes about 10 cups. It is so perfect, I can't wait for you to try it.